Okay, Shalom, Shalom, it's the brother Kadash. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, or Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles. Peace, blessings, and honors to all the brothers in this truth right now. You can see behind me, that's the Arch St. Louis. And I always like to do these little videos whenever I travel to like another city. This is like a second home to me. But um, would the Lord destroy St. Louis? So I did one saying, would the Lord destroy Chicago? So this one is, would the Lord destroy St. Louis? You know, don't rush to answer the question. You know, I know a lot of brothers already know the answer to that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, earlier this morning when I woke up, I seen something on, um, it was on the app. And it's, it's, it was asking the question, is America a utopia, right? So if you don't know what the word utopia means, then um, you could just go Google it, you know, or think of, I forget the name of that cartoon, but it was like an old school cartoon called The Jets or something, something like that, where pretty much humans on Earth was living, just living it up, you know, and pretty much like robots and what you see happening now, Elon Musk just came out with a robot, or they're finna come out with a robot. The narrow chip thing, the mark of the beast, which is the implant chip, pretty much where computers, everything was digital, and computers and robots did all the hard work for humans. So all humans had to do is live life, you know, live life to the fullest, you know, work if they want to. But the thing, and that's the thing why they're trying to come with this universal income, why they're giving out so much money, because that's the new wave. That's the new world. Or you could call it the new world order. You could call it ut utopia or whatever. But what people don't understand that what comes with that. So you're thinking like, that's a good thing. Let's let robots do all the work for us. Right. And, you know, we could just live it up, take vacations all year long, you know, enjoy our family, work if we want to. But what you don't understand what comes with that before they could do a utopia, they have to do it. What we have right now is a dystopia. So you could look up what that word means, too, which is just the opposite of utopia. But in order for them to do that, they have to bring the system down and they can't do that with as many people that's on Earth right now. So they have to get rid of billions of people to do that. That means a lot of death. That means a lot of mourning. A lot of sorrow, a lot of pain, and you may not be selected to be a part of that group that is going to be a part of their new world order, their utopia, especially if you're rebellious, especially if you follow the law, statutes, commandments, that's following in the Bible of the of the Lord, right? You're not going to be selected to be a part of that. So you think, okay, it's good, but you're not understanding. They're only going to use you up to a certain point until they could dispose of you. You know, for them to get a utopia, they plan on killing billions of people and not having that many people on the earth because you can't have that with so many people because it's too many people to take care of. It's easier if they have one billion people and then they have robots doing everything for the rope. One billion people, digital, Internet, for all things. That's why the digital currency is um, booming right now, because that's the next wave of the new, new world order. That's the next currency of the new world order. You know, so it's easier to do it with a billion people than seven billion people. So that means there has to be a lot of death. But in order for them to get that utopia, they have to first cause hell on earth. They have to destroy their kingdom pretty much, which leads to the question, you know, is will St. Louis be destroyed? Yes. And not just because they want to do it because they do. You think that these people are for America and trying to build it. No, they trying to destroy it. Because what they want to build back up is a new world system after they get rid of millions of people and destroy some of these places. Who's putting that in their heart? The Lord is putting it in their heart. Isaiah 45, Amos chapter 3 tells you clearly, like, if there be evil done in the city, has the Lord not done it? It says the Lord controls good and evil. The Lord controls darkness and light. So as the Lord is putting in their hearts, just like he controlled Pharaoh's heart in Egypt, he's controlling their hearts to do this. Why? Because he's going to catch them sli slipping and also to separate the true followers of Israel, the elect that truly follow him and those that just say they follow him with, the, with their mouths. So what they're going to try to do is they have to try to destroy all this. Right. Kill off as many people as they can. And the ones that follow the system 
And it's not even that if you follow the system, you be an Israelite and follow everything. You go get the job, you follow everything, and they still going to use you up to a certain point, and then they're going to dispose of you. They want their people, uh, certain elect people, to be rulers over the earth. And then they have the internet, they have their digital everything, they have their robots, and then they dispose of all their enemies. And then they may have a class of people that's, you know, servants and slaves. The ones that go and maintenance the robots and stuff like that. If the stuff, you know, the AI technology, it does it itself. You know, so people don't understand that. And they don't understand what they're dealing with. You know, so yeah. It's not j just that the Lord is going to destroy America. They also are going to destroy it. Now, I'm surprised they got the book of Revelations in this um, Bible. You know, when I get here, like we go to a hotel or something, um, I didn't bring my Bible. So I understand that they always have a Bible at these certain hotels that I stay at. And I always get in it and I like to read it, you know, because people be talking about, oh, your Bible, your Bible. No, it's Holy Bible. The same one I read last time, but just at a different hotel, right? It could get in any Bible and pull and pull out the truth, you know? Damn, it's so dark. That's why I'm trying to get some light. So, this is Revelations 12. Let's get it out the Bible to prove it. And I'll start at verse 12. It says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. It says, woe to the inhabitants of earth. So it says, woe to the inhabitants of earth. The people on earth, woe to them. Woe means destruction, right? So it says, um, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. So that's why, you know, in the book of Matthew, the Lord went preaching because first John the Baptist went preaching saying, um, ye, um, the kingdom is at hand. He went preaching saying the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is at hand. And then you see after that when the Lord came on the scene, he used that same thing. He went around saying, look, repent ye for the kingdom is at hand, right? So that's the thing is that the kingdom is at hand. The closer we get to the, all this being destroyed, because the Lord is coming back to destroy the world, just in case you didn't know. The world is wicked, so the Lord is coming back to destroy it. So you shouldn't follow the world because this is the same world that the Lord is coming back to destroy it. But the closer we get to all these prophecies being fulfilled, the closer we get to the kingdom. So the devil understands that and he knows that because what's the greatest sign? The prophets are coming back. His people waking up, following him, the lost statues commandments. He could see that happening, especially with all the groups and camps and stuff. So with him seeing that, he like, look, my time is short. So he's going to come down with great wrath in order to do what? To try to complete, complete that new world order. To try to get that new world order, his agenda. You know, the mark of the beast, the image, you know, to try to complete that because the Lord is putting it in his heart to try to do that. So for him to do that, he has to come down with great wrath on the people to get everything in order so they could put up a fight against the Lord when the Lord comes back. So the kingdom is at hand, you know. So, yeah, we these are great times, actually. A lot of people in fear. But then the Lord said, look, fear none of these things. I think that's like Revelations 2. Didn't the Lord say, fear in the Lord, have trust in the Lord, have faith? So what are you afraid for? Because the people that's going out there and getting a job, the tr I mean, truth be told, they only getting it because out of fear. I can't travel. They saying I'm going to lose this, lose a job. I seen a parent that lost um, custody of their child because they didn't get it. That's all fear. You afraid of something. So out of fear, you making a decision to go get something that you don't know. They could tell you whatever's in it. They told our people, we know for a fact, and this ain't even going back that long, um, when they was giving syphilis in the um, Tuskegee um, project, I believe it's called. They could tell you whatever's in there. You don't know. You didn't see it yourself. Did, did they read off the ingredients to you before you went and got it in your arm? So you don't know what's in it. And you don't know how you're personally going to be affected by it. So you're putting your faith in the government. You're putting your faith in man. A man-made thing instead of putting your faith in the Lord. And you're putting your faith in man because of fear. You, My personal opinion on it, it's not just this job. You shouldn't get any jobs. Period. That's my personal opinion on it. You know, but you're supposed to have fear in the Lord. You know, um, Ecclesiastes um, chapter 12, um, 
verse 13, I believe. You know, what's what's the whole duty of men? Fearing God and keep his commandments. You know, not fear in the things on earth, not fear um, people, man, Esau. You know, so out of fear, people are going to go do these things and they're going to go get this because they're afraid. But like I said, the devil will have great wrath. For you. So the question was, and let me see if they got this book in here before I um, bring this priest up off. So the question was, it was like, it should be coming up soon. Is the Lord going to destroy? Oh, man. St. Louis, you know, since we're here. I did one with Chicago. Maybe I bring out the same precept, right? Is the Lord going to destroy St. Louis? Is the Lord going to destroy the arch? Is the arch going to come to rumbles? Is this arch going to stand forever? Right? So when the Lord sets up the kingdom of heaven, is this arch still going to be standing here? Right? So... If you know the answer to that, you know damn well this arch is not going to still be standing here when the kingdom of heaven is on earth. Revelation 21 tells you it's going to be on earth. Then why would you follow the world? Well, you could clearly see that the Lord is going to destroy the world because the world is wicked. So why would you go follow? Follow not a, a great multitude to do evil. Learn not the way of the heathens. Uh, 1 John Chapter 2, starting at verse 15, love not the world or the things in the world. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to that one next. But this is Malachi um, chapter 1. Let me see where I want it. That's weird. Here's Salaki. That's weird. Okay, it's right here. Just different writing it says but i think it means the same thing let's just read it you know verse three i'll start at verse three it says but esau have hated and laid waste his mountains and his heritage for the jackals of the wilderness that's what's throwing me off <laughs> it says even though edom has said we have been impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places because they did you know they came they built america on the backs of the israelites right in a city, so they have a city like St. Louis, right? So they said, um, we will return and build the desolate places. Thus say the Lord of hosts, they may build, but I will throw down. So the Lord said, they may build. They may build up a whole place called America, which is Mystery Babylon in the Bible, going back to Revelation 17, Revelation 18. They might build up a New York. They might build up a Chicago. They might build up a LA. They might build up a Florida. They may build, but I will throw down. So when the Lord comes back, he said, look, he's going to throw down. So will St. Louis be destroyed? Yeah, because he's going to throw it the fuck down, man. It says they should be called the territory of wickedness. They is talking about a man, a group of men, you know, called the Edomites. That should be called the territory of wickedness. Who's done the most wickedness on earth? If you just take the transatlantic slave trade and you take the genocide of the Native Americans, those are the two worst events ever on earth. The two most wickedest events on earth, if you take it in the totality, right? And who was that done by? Who hands was that done by? Did the Japanese do that? Did the Chinese do that? Did the Arabs do that? Y'all love to say the Arabs or the Edomites. Did they do that? We know they're, they're the Ishmaelites. They go back to Ishmael. They tell you that they selves. Did they do that? Who did it? Um, it says, um, and the people against whom the Lord will have indignation for forever. So not that the Lord chooses Jacob over Esau. He just favors Jacob more over Esau. No, it's that the Lord actually hates Esau. That's why he said he will have indignation forever. Right? So, I mean, we got to deal with that. So it said, look, they build, they build their cities, but the Lord will throw down. Now I want to jump back since I did mention it. Um, let me see if I could find it because i don't it's seeming like this ain't got all the books in it but it i think it does here nope it's skipping but let me see how it's skipping here's like this is it got it it's just weird how it's set up but it says first john 
chapter 2, but we can find it though. That's okay. Verse 15 it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. No, go get the job. The world is getting the job, so they're going to mandate it eventually for everybody. So go get it. It says, do not love the, the world or the things in the world. Because we understand that this is a wicked place and the Lord is coming back to destroy it. It says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if you will go get something that you have no clue about and put faith in it and put it in your body, that's loving the world, man, and the things in it. It's you defiling your temple. The scriptures say, do not defile your temple. It says, for all that is in the world, even the jab, the lust of flesh, right? So because of the lust of flesh and fear, you go do these things, like get the jab. It says the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. So because you try to save your life, you you think that you're trying to save your life, you go get the jab. Did the Lord say those that should lose their life should find life? Those that should try to find life should lose life? Or those that should try to save their life should lose life. I think that's Matthew chapter 10. It says, it's not the father. It's not of the father, but it's of the world. So you saying that you follow on the Lord and that it's of the Lord, but it's not. It's not of the father. It's of the world, actually. It says, in the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abide forever. See, follow the law, statutes, commandments, follow the Lord. Put your faith in the Lord, not a man, not the jab. Right. But you but you guys say you follow the Lord. You read from the same Bible. How do you not know this? How do you not know that scripture? Right. What's your interpretation of it? Right. This is. um. Here, let me this is the last one I'm going to get, but let me see where it's at. Second Peter's right. Um, should be second Peter's chapter three. Yep. Right here. Um, verse 6 it says by which the world that then exists perish being flooded with water but the heavens and the earth which are now the ones that we live in right now right because the first death was during the time of Noah was a great flood this we're, we're getting to the second death which is going to come by fire and brimstone why would there be a such thing as a second death that comes by fire and brimstone if the world is not wicked right it says, heaven and earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire and to the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And we know the number one person on that list are the Edomites, just like in Malachi chapter one. It said um, they should be called the territory of wickedness. Right. It says, but beloved, do not forget this one thing. That with the Lord one day is a thousand years. So a thousand years. That's one day. So a thousand years to us is one day to the Lord. So all the things they did. They thinking oh that's in the past. That's old. Why are we still talking about that? That shit just happened yesterday to the Lord. He still remembers it. And he's still coming back for it. He says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. It's some count slackness. But it's long suffering towards us. Not willing that any should perish. But all should come to repentance. Right. But many are called. Remember many are called. But few are chosen. It says. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Why? Because you're trying to save your life. You're trying to get a job so you can get on airplanes. You're trying to get on a job so you can keep your music career going. So you can keep your nursing career going. You ain't really thinking about the Lord coming back. So you ain't really trying to follow him. If the Lord said he was coming back tomorrow, everybody at um at 10 p.m. tonight, everybody will start trying to follow the Lord. <laughs> it says the Lord is not slack concerning. No, it says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with um, fervent heat. Both the earth and, and the works that are in it will be burned up. So will St. Louis be destroyed? Yes. Is the arch going to be burned up and melted with fervent heat? Yes. And that's the patience and the faith of the saints. You know, Revelation chapter 13, starting at um, verse 7, I believe. Those that have ears, let them hear. You know, um, ears to hear. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. He that lead in captivity must be led in captivity. So with that, I'm going to say salvation to the elect. Shalom.